working on the gauges today. And so the gauges are, seem to be pretty decent, um, but they're very dirty. Again, they've got layers of paint all over them. So I'm gonna to try to clean these all up and get them going. One thing you do notice is I bought a new temp gauge. Um, it looks very similar, but the numbers do seem to be just a little bit more bold. They're just a little bit fatter. Um, the needle's a little bit different too, but I'm not gonna to worry too much about that. But one thing is the bezel's different. So this one is broken. Um, the probe bro broke off the end. Uh, so I'm going to take this bezel off and clean it and paint it and then swap it out. And that way they all look the same. I also have to still have to order a new fuel gauge. All I have is six volt ones. So that's the plan. I'll show you how to pull these off and then clean the glass, make sure everything looks good and put them back together. So I usually try to pick a spot kind of by right by that little spot piece that holds get your screwdriver as flat as you can and then just work your way around it if they're real rusty they'll kind of they'll really fall apart but if you go real slow you can start to open that bezel up without doing much damage Okay, so here's my nice little bezel. And it is a little rusty, but we'll see if we can pop it apart without wrecking the glass or anything. All right, so that is in good shape. The black is all still nice and clean. And there's our glass. And then it's got uh, usually a little rubber seal of some kind. Some of the early ones I've taken apart have actually got plastic seals, or paper seals in them. This one has got, looks like rubber, so I'm gonna try to get uh, something a little sharper and take that out. Okay, so you can see this one, exact same thing. It's got the little ring on the inside. The gauge itself seems to be pretty clean. <laughs> Okay, just real light, little bit of soapy water on my rag. So we're just gonna try to do like half of it just to see if we get anything off. Nope, nothing came off. So instead of messing with this part of it, I think I'm gonna put this away and then I'll get this split apart, get the glass cleaned up and then I'm just gonna put each one of these in a baggie as I go, because I don't wanna wreck anything. Once these are cleaned and painted, then I'll show you how to put them back on. So before I started prying on this, I thought I'd show you either somebody else has already been in here, or that is somewhat the factory. So right over here, there's the little, uh, little gouge open spot, and then right there is where I started to work on it. So just thought I'd show you that. Here are the bezels for all the gauges. They're all cleaned up, and some of them cleaned up real good. You can see this one right here. It's got a lot of pitting, so I'll probably put a couple coats on that, sand it back down. A little bit more sanding right there. You can see I gotta get a little bit of that old paint out. But this is why I like to do it, because once you get them all painted, they look really nice. So hopefully that happens, and I'll show you what it looks like. Something with a plastic tip would be a lot better than this, but I don't have anything that's got a real good hard plastic tip. So a couple things, make sure your gauge is square in there. So don't just start on one end and work it around. Start, find a spot, one of, probably one of the spots that looks worse, put some good pressure down on it, and then just roll about a quarter inch of the lip up. Then turn it all the way to the other side, 180. Pick the other side and do the exact same thing. You're gonna feel the gauge kind of slides back and forth in your hand. And you're pushing down and you're putting pressure. And then go half, 
So you've already got it on one side. Now go back, get kind of close to the other side. And just keep doing it like that because that gauge is gonna move around. And what you don't want is you don't want your gauge to be off-centered and have a lot of lip on one side and very little lip on the other. So just keep working it around and you'll get it back on. Okay, once you feel like you've got it pretty much seated all the way down, you've got all these little rough edges. And so now what you do is you take your screwdriver and you just kind of get a little angle on it and just press down and drag it. And it's gonna start smoothing out all those little wrinkles. And pretty soon, you'll get rid of all those little jagged ends all the way around. Just keep working it around. If you get one that's sticking up real high, Give it a good push with your tip and then go back to flat. Hopefully you can see that. But eventually, you'll get rid of all the little jagged edges. They'll all flatten right back out. Your gauge face will be nice and tight. All right. Okay, there it is. Gauge number three. Okay, so here's the gauges so far. This was the new, oops, the new gauge. And so I put the original bezel off the old gauge that was broken onto it. So it kind of gave it a little, little bit more of an older look and it matches all the other ones. So all I have left is my amp meter, but uh, I dropped the rubber seal that's in it. So I have to go find that, clean up the glass, and, uh, and then that one will be done and all the gauges will be ready to go back in. All right, there's the gauges back in the Jeep. Uh, you can definitely see the difference on that temp gauge. The color is just a little bit off compared to the others. That's the original fuel gauge. I just have it in there so you can kind of see what the whole set looks like. Um, when the new one comes in, I'll swap it out. So there it is, a simple way to kind of make your gauges look nice, fresh, and clean. Um, takes a little bit of time, but I, I think it's worth it. So anyway, tell me what you think down in the comments. Thank you guys for watching, and we'll see you next time.